The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. We're here in our new shop. Let's check it out. Well, it looks like all of my stuff is here, including the parts for the Apple One replica that we're going to finish in today's episode. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. I've got a few more things to do with the keyboard before I can move on with the unit. I'm using shift registers so we can map the whole keyboard with only four lines of data. Clock, data, latch, and data in. So what happens is it clocks out 16 bits to these two shift registers, which selects which column it wants to look at. And then while it's clocking these out, it's clocking in from this shift register to see what the result of each one of these lines is. So if I push a button, it completes a circuit between this shift register and this shift register, putting data on the screen. And then I've mapped this all to the columns and uh, should work. So what I do is these are maps. So they're either characters or the ASCII value of return, which is 13, or the ASCII value of escape or back. So I can try to type in something. As you see, it actually goes pretty quick because there's no debounce yet, but we can see that it does work. I also shift works. When I push shift or control, it sets a bit in the shift register. So it's like if that bit is set, then add 56 to the character so you get the alternate version. So negative becomes an underscore, equals becomes a plus. I'm also gonna add that for the control. Um, I don't think the Apple one uses a whole lot of control characters. I think control C maybe. So control will just subtract 64 from whatever ASCII value you find. Yeah, so I gotta put in debounce, but then I think the keyboard's about ready to go. I'm gonna start routing the parts for the Apple One laptop. We moved the CNC machine, obviously, but when we redid the table, we gave it a vacuum table. So there's three total layers of MDF, medium density fiberboard, and uh, the lower two layers have chambers in them. So there's basically like, you know, chambers for air and then all these holes line up with it. And then this top piece is basically a sacrificial piece. There's no screws in it, so we can re replane it without hitting any screws. And the thing that's good about the vacuum table is you don't have to use uh, screws or clamps. I should have done this back when I first set up my router, but I didn't. And you just put your piece where you want it, and then you cover up as many extra holes as you can, just to make sure the vacuum is pretty good. You never want a perfect vacuum because that'll burn out your motor and your shop vac, which I have hooked up down here. But we shouldn't have to worry about that. So now we can hopefully use up scrap material on the router more efficiently because we don't have to worry about overages for our screws or clamps. Everybody was trash cat fighting. Wah! That cat was fat as lightning. Do -do 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 -do. After I've routed the pieces, I put them in a sacrificial jig and route the backs. The reason we use a sacrificial jig is so that we know that it's lined up properly. So now it's routed on the inside and the back, giving us a cool bevel. Let me show you how the jig works. I've got this half inch foam. I lay it on the router table using the vacuum table and I'm gonna cut a hole in it that is the size of the piece that we want to double sided cut. Now that I have the hole cut, I can pull out the inside and then put in the piece that I want to cut. I'm going to countersink where the screw holes go first, and then I'm gonna use the V-bit to make a cool bevel around the edges. There we go, double-sided part. The design theme I'm gonna go with is dark woods, a little bit of red in them, and black, and then I'm gonna make everything glossy. So here is the plywood that just came off the laser. And I am going to use this red oak on it. See how it looks. Oh yeah. Well, that will definitely be dark enough. This is the screen frame. It has two layers to it. And the reason for that is we need a little bit of depth to make room for the keys 
when the laptop is closed. I'm going to uh, put a little stain on and then glue it together. Hey, I heard that one song on my way back from Menards where it was like, she never mentions the word addiction. Down, 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 down. In certain company. Down, 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 down. She'll tell you she's an orphan. Down, 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 down. After you meet her family. Says she talks to Angel. Call her right by her name. I'm gonna stop now. The pieces are starting to come together, but I have to put them together in a certain way. For instance, this is the top half that the LCD sits in, and it's gonna have a nice open area here where we can put a, a cool wood plaque. And then this wooden piece frames the screen. Oh yeah, this is gonna look nice. This indentation here is going to be used to line it with oak veneer. Like that. But I have to do it a certain way. I have to actually bolt this together, then put the oak veneer down, then cut it, then glue it to this. I have to do it in that fashion because otherwise I can't keep the um, gap consistent. So yeah, you kind of have to put it together partially in order to take it apart and finish it, if that makes any sense. I don't have to paint this inner Sintra because it will be completely covered by wood veneer. But all the exposed plastic, I have painted a uh, gloss black enamel. The rest of this looks pretty good. Oh, look at that cat like reflexes. Wizard-like reflexes. Wizard's reflexes are so good, like if he drops a can of Metamucil, he can pick it up instantly. Oh, I'm sorry, waitress at Country Kitchen, you dropped this menu. Wow, you reflexes are really good, Wizard. Yeah, it's because I'm a cat, but I'm old. Soon I will be dead, and no one will remember me. What? I've seen things you humans wouldn't believe. <laughs> Catnip glistening at Tenizer Gate. Sea beams, the moons of Uranus. All of these moments forever lost, like kitty litter in the rain. Now it's time for a tech timeout. How about a brief tour of our new shop? But remember, we're still moving in, so everything's not in its final position. So the CNC machine is over here. It, there's a lot more room for it now, which is good. We've also put a vacuum table into it, which, which helps hold down material. I put my computer desk here, so now we have more than one way to film it, which is what a big part of this is all about. My workbench is over here, so I'll have one chair, so I can go back and forth. That'll be nice. And we have, you know, obviously a lot more different angles to shoot from in this configuration as well. The parts bins, we're gonna arrange those. Those aren't really how we want them. Felix's desk is over here. It hasn't changed either, but uh, there it is. And we have even more lights than we used to. Let's take a look at Allison's area. Allison's desk is a work in progress as well. Uh, this is so she can like sit here and see what's going on and be ready to film. And then back here we have our break room, which is close to being done. Uh, we just basically put all the stuff that we had. Well, we bought a globe bar. Uh, put the pinballs back here, put one of my old TVs. And of course the couch. So this is where we're gonna be filming the Ben Heck Show from now on. I 3D printed a whole box full of keys using white filament. Then we painted them with black enamel. What we're gonna do now is put them into this jig in the laser. 
and raster cut the letters into them. So we're gonna burn away the black paint, revealing the white letters. Allison and I are gonna work as a team. I'm gonna send the files and she's gonna load the letters. That was a four, right Allison, that we last did? Yes. Okay. Let's assemble the Apple One replica. We're gonna start with the screen. This is where the LCD goes. I'm gonna put it down like that. Plug this for now. So this is up. I designed these gaps specifically for, you guessed it, Funky foam. <laughs> of course, what else would I put there? <laughs> no, funky foam, you just, just gotta try it. If you try it, you will love it. Funky foam is always a consistent thickness of 0 0.075 inches. Therefore, you can use it in your designs. Consistency is the Spice Girls of life. Wait. Allison knows all the Spice Girl songs. This week on the Ben Heck Show, I heart the 90s. Now with the funky foam, it should fit pretty snugly. Now what I'll do is I will put spacers on this. So basically the case itself will hold the screen in. We don't need to actually glue it or screw it. Screw it and glue it. I have to admit, this screen is just kind of old. I'm just using it to use it up. So it can be finally used for something, but an old low resolution computer is perfect. So I'm gonna run the video cable here and I've marked where the slot is on the case. And since this screen consumes 1.2 amps, which is actually kind of a lot, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna use a thicker cable just to be sure. Sooner or later you'll be loafing around. Where's my screwdriver? He's a cop. Maybe Tom Cruise can be in the sequel and it can be Last Samurai Cop. It looks good enough to eat off of. All right. Okay, I'm gonna set the screen aside and work on the real guts, the computer part. <laughs> hey, it's like Scrabble. <laughs> it's Apple, so it has to say return. <laughs> it says return because that used to be the carriage return. You know where the typewriter carriage would go back? And in ASCII, it still is. It's uh... thirteen carriage return. Hey, wanna play Scrabble, Allison? There are the keys. I'm going to put this in place over it and mark the holes. I think I might need to add some spaces in here, so I might need to 3D print those. But I can mark the holes for starters. I 3D printed these spacers. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting down the 3D printed spacers. I'm gonna screw the keyboard in place. Um, I need to make sure that it's right. I guess that's kind of an obvious statement. <laughs> Um, you know, that the, the keys feel good, none of them are stuck on. Uh, I'll probably put like some spacers behind this so it doesn't like bend in when you push it. So yeah, I've just gotta screw it all together, see how it fits, add any spacers or washers just to make sure that it's pretty good. The keys are in place and I also added some weights because the bottom half of this won't weigh as much as the top, which means if I don't artificially weight the bottom, this will tip it over. So I'm preparing for that. Now I'm gonna start working on the bottom. I'm gonna go from my power plug here to the power switch. 
And we have a five volt regulator, which powers most of the logic. And the 3.3 volt regulator is already on there. And then the 12 volts will also pass directly to the screen. Got a bunch of these old wires laying around. Gonna use them up. Uh, when we were moving the shop, I was throwing away anything that wasn't worth moving. And I came across my old Atari disk drive that I had as a kid. And I believe this switch was from that. So this was my childhood computer's disk drive switch. I mean, most of the disk drive was shot, but I salvaged the switch. Oh crap, I can't go any broad to any Broadway shows because I didn't buy my tickets 3,000 years in advance. Wow, I could write a Disney movie. Let's see. A princess wants to, I don't know, experience the world, but her fish daddy won't let her. Therefore, she finds a magical spell and does something she's not supposed to do. And how am I doing so far? Yay! There's the symbol, it's blinking. The power supply is just barely enough to do it. But that's good enough. All right, let's finish this sucker. It looks like it's fitting together. These are some 3D printed hinges I designed a few years ago. They should work for this project to attach the halves together. So let it go. Oh, then eventually Sloth Prison is overrun by the sloths and then it turns into Planet of the Sloths. I don't have a 12 volt wall wart that has quite enough amperage, so I have it hooked up to the bench supply for now. Let's try it out. Open it up, turn it on, hit reset. Okay, let's try something. Let's look at a memory location. All right, let's run basic E000.R. Oh, okay. See if there's anything in memory, which there shouldn't be. Nope, all right. I'm gonna put in a program. Let's run my amazing program. Of course, hello world. Let's see if the control works. Yep, all right, control C works. So to wrap up, the Apple One was a fun computer to replicate. We got to do some low level wiring, some ROM imaging, and in the end we ended up with a nice laptop that looks like an old kit computer from the 70s, complete with wood. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to teach Allison how to solder. Do you think she's up to the challenge? Find out next week. We'll see you then. That was the first thing we shot in the new shop. It's special. Yeah. You should bronze it like baby shoes. Can't believe you fell down on the ground after I said that. File sent. And I can like move around like this. Like I'm in some sort of movie. Like this. I'm decrypting the files. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom kind of seems like an Eagles fan. Elephant poo contains up to 50% water, and that could be enough to keep me alive. God, everything scares you. <laughs> what was that anyway? The power was inside of you all along, Allison. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show was brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.